So people accused you of taking steroids after the tainted supplement thing, but you've never tested positive before no, never. or after. What's up, guys? Derek from PlutonRadies.com. Today we're going to be talking about Yoel Romero's physique and if i think it's natural if i what i think he took in particular to achieve it if it was unnatural how i think he's skirting the tests if he is um just basically anything and everything that i could conclude when it comes to performance enhancing drug use in the ufc relative to his history and you know current performance slash body composition so obviously regardless if we're looking at pre-usada post-usada yoel has easily one of the best physiques of all time in the sport this guy looks insane and pushing into his 40s having this physique makes it even more impressive and any <laughs> pretty much anyone with you know any kind of uh, experience in the gym would probably jump to the conclusion that this guy's on gear like his physique is not naturally naturally achievable for any of us like this guy is one of a kind, but can he do it naturally? That's the question. And the only way I'm able to really tell for him is historically digging back, not just, you know, earlier UFC fights, but historically looking way back to his wrestling days. So if you look at his history, not only is he, uh, you know, a prominent UFC fighter, but back in the day, he was a world champion wrestler too. So this guy used to compete in the Olympics way back in, as far back as uh, 1997, this guy was competing at the World Wrestling Championships, and I actually dug up some footage, and this is kind of where we're going to start off. We have some footage from him in uh, the 90s, the late 90s, when this guy was much younger, obviously, and going to the early 2000s, and we can get kind of a gauge of, did his physique look you know, wildly different year to year or sport to sport as he went through uh, his career, because obviously if... Uh, there's some staggering difference after uh, many years training and all of a sudden you blow up, you know, for a seasoned fighter that's been doing this for years um, and has, you know, worked out consistently for years on end. It's very unlikely for a, you know, massive transformation to happen in the middle of a career. And that's usually the biggest red flag of hormone use. So digging back all the way to 1997, this is the first uh, footage I could find of him. And unfortunately, it's not the highest quality. But we can see sort of what he looks like here. And this is him on the right and the red here. Obviously, <laughs> he uh, doesn't look bad, honestly. Like, it's kind of a grainy video. It's not like he's shirtless. We can't really tell what's going on. And one of the things with Yoel is most of his pictures that look the most insane are him in insane downlining, flexing his face off. So trying to compare this to a baseline now is a bit difficult to do, but at least gives us some sort of gauge of reference point. And we can see he has muscle on him. The guy is not small by any means. And frankly, he doesn't look way different just on the surface when I'm looking at his arms and his delts, um, the separation between his bicep and his front delt. Um, nothing looks way different to me. And I actually found this uh, before and after image 17 years apart this is him uh in his wrestling days you can see the definition here you can see the uh chest you can see the delt you can see the bicep and he looks awesome even back in the day when he was wrestling compared to now doesn't seem like much of a difference so i wanted to dig through more of his wrestling footage to get kind of a better sense if there was any sort of fluctuation here he is in um 2000 sydney's olympic free classic final and you can see here his traps are popping he's got uh the delt and the arm separation here still but here you know when he's just standing here relaxed this is a much higher quality video than the previous one and does he look the same as he does now not really if you look at the before and after though this is him after or this is him before sorry and this is him after on the left is this just a matter of lighting look at the traps look how they connect to his neck look at <laughs> just the size in general, you have to keep in mind, this guy has been competing at 85 kilograms pretty much his entire life. So he's been from 97, he's competed and cut weight to make 85 kilograms. The only time he competed less than that was to compete at 84 kilograms in the 2000s. And every single fight he's done basically that I've seen is middleweight. So he's basically been cutting to the exact same weight for about over 20 years now. So that is obviously notable. And moving forward to 2005, this is um, one of his last wrestling matches. And 
Again, you can kind of see the same physique reflected. This guy's crazy athletic. He's not massive, but I don't see a difference, to be honest, from like 97 all the way to 2005. And there are less flattering images of him, like uh, in the in the ceremonies after, where he looks pretty pissed off here. <laughs> but in some of them where he is... Uh, you know, flexing and uh, celebrating like on the left here basically looks the same as he does current day. Here's another shot he put up uh, 2016. This is a flashback to the days when it was illegal to punch, kick, elbow, and knee people. So this is his wrestling days. And as you can see here, he's, uh, you know, tired, gasping for air. And you can still see the visible cuts of a six pack popping out here. You can see the arm separation. You can see his meaty ass trap up here. So the guy throughout the duration of his wrestling career, from what I can tell, when there's favorable lighting circumstances, more or less looks the same. Like when I saw this image, this kind of sealed it for me because this is like one of those shots in uh, the final uh, ruling of the competition, if he wins or not. And anytime he flexes or does like a crazy, you know, celebration or whatever, you see everything tense up and you see all the separation and muscle detail from how cut this guy is. And that is one of the main reasons he looks the way he does. I think he has exceptional muscle inserts for his abs as well as his chest and his traps. His arms in particular are not that insane. His back isn't, you know, massive, but he has exceptional like beach body parts. He has, you know, the good abs. Like the abs are his genetic strong point in my opinion. And he's got crazy traps and a lot of people would, you know, think, oh, you know, androgen receptor density is highest in the trap. So that must imply steroid use. Um, you know, that's certainly possible for the only thing that I would say though is, is what's the likelihood that he stayed on the exact same thing for almost 25 years straight. I wanted to dig into some of his UFC footage before I gave a firm stance on my opinion or not because this guy's been tested like crazy in the UFC. This guy is one of the most highly tested athletes in the UFC and apparently in 2018, he was tested 17 times. And this was a Reddit thread I saw and it was pretty funny going through the comments. It's going to be super awkward when you said I have to give Yoel that award they give out for testing clean a certain number of times. They must be pulling hairs given the way he looks like a Ninja Turtle at 40 and is knocking people into another dimension who are a decade younger than him. All of that without steroids. The power of genetics is real, especially since he's on something. No one, nothing will ever con convince me that man is all natty. I just can't believe that. So a lot of these... Oh, but he's already failed. Like a lot of these are on the fence if this guy's natty or not. I swear they're running a betting pool at the USADA office to see if they'll catch certain fighters with the uh, Paolo King of Bitches cost. <laughs> it's not a secret. Nowitzki said that they applied the smell test and target fighters that seem more suspicious. Um, <laughs> USADA, I love you. Y'all Romero, that's funny. So yeah, if you actually go into the UFC... Uh, database for USADA, you can see UOL was tested uh, 17 times in 2018. In 2019, he was tested seven times. And in 2020, he's been tested five times. So this guy's tested one of the most high number of times of any athlete in the sport. So, you know, that really cuts into the likelihood that he's, uh, you know, planning the pharmacokinetics of short acting esters and clearing them very quickly for fights like obviously there's some level of strategy that has to be deployed to really get around that again though there's only a surface level of testing typically for screening and then carbon isotope uh testing is done thereafter to really own in on somebody who's kind of like tripped the red flags initially so with that being said though 17 times in 2018 and avoided any kind of red flags that's pretty fucking impressive Going to uh, his UFC history, and I want to get into his uh, positive test result soon, which we're going to get to uh, in a sec here once we get to that time frame. So going back to 2009, this is actually supposedly his first MMA fight. And again, a fucking potato for a camera. So it's kind of hard to tell. But from what we can see, the traps are still there. Everything still looks more or less the same from what I can tell. And this guy is... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Sorry for the bad quality. This was filmed on a potato in 2009. This guy agrees with me. That's funny. So here he is just fucking smoking this guy and taking him out with relative ease. Um, just as athletic as he always is, looking pretty much the same from what I can tell despite this garbage video footage. The traps are popping. You can see the, uh, the cuts somewhat. <laughs> Anyways, he pretty much looks the same and he's weighed the same for this fight. He's been a middleweight as far as I know for the entirety of his career, including the UFC. And as you kind of uh, go through his highlights, it becomes pretty apparent that nothing really substantially changes fight to fight. Sometimes he's 
perhaps a little more cut. Sometimes he was a little bit bigger, but you know, more or less, he's very, very consistent and always looks more or less the same as he did from the 90s all the way into the 2000s and into the <laughs> into the 2010s. This guy has uh, gone through his whole career. Some of the fights, again, though, he does look a bit smaller, but so a lot of it ju does just come down to the camera and the lighting and, you know, like how sweaty you are, how pumped up you are in this fight, for example. He doesn't look as crazy impressive on the surface as he does during... Uh, some of his like, you know, pr promotional images used online where he's at weigh-ins and he's water depleted and flexing his fucking face off or in the post fight where he's sweaty oil, like looking glistening and fucking <laughs> all pumped up from punching for 15 minutes straight. And he's looking uh, insane. If you go through all of his fights though, it's pretty consistent across the board. There's not a substantial difference in any one fight. And what I did do is pick out where I thought he looked the most jacked and I wanted to kind of do a analysis around the year that led up to that fight and shortly thereafter to kind of evaluate, is it just the lighting after all? Did he do some sort of peak to prep for that fight that blatantly looks like gear or not? Because if I can really deeply analyze the fight where I think he looked the most jacked, then I feel like that kind of gives a blanket statement for the rest of them. So this was the Weidman fight where I think he looked, you know, obviously he always looks pretty much the same, to be honest. But some of the images in particular from this fight are used a lot in pr promotional images to uh, hype up other uh, UFC events and whatnot. And that's kind of what I wanted to own in on. This was shortly after testing positive for the tainted supplements lawsuit. So let's just dig into that quick. So this is uh, Romero, a Cuba native and former Olympic wrestling silver medalist tested positive in December 2015 for the prohibited substance ibutamorin, which stimulates growth hormone secretion. He was suspended by USADA for six months when tests showed that the supplement Romero was taking shred RX from Gold Star had ibutamorin in it. The band, if you don't know what ibutamorin is, I recommend you watch my MK677 overview. It is the most in-depth breakdown of what ibutamorin is on the entire internet. I assure you that it goes into every single notable clinical study. It's a pipeline for uh, being developed as a therapeutic treatment for all of its uh, clinical applications and whatnot, exactly how it can be leveraged in a performance dancing context, what can be expected from it, exactly what it does mechanism of action wise, pretty much everything and anything you'd possibly want to know about it is covered in that video, as well as the article I wrote on moreplacemoredates.com. But anyways, the banned drug was not on the warning label. Romero was facing a two-year suspension if he wasn't able to prove the supplement was contaminated. And he did end up uh, receiving, you know, on paper, it said he received $27.45 million in a lawsuit against the company after proving that uh, it was tainted. So again, though, the thing you have to consider with Abutamoran, like everyone thinks this is pretty cut and dry, like most guys who test positive for stuff, it's they're not uh, taking into account the pharmacokinetics of what they're taking, the metabolites, they're uh, just being stupid about, uh, you know, taking something that has a long detection time or isn't bioidentical and can kind of skirt around the testing parameters. With Abutamoran, no sane UFC fighter would ever use this compound. Reason being, it is a potent ghrelin receptor agonist. And what that is, is ghrelin is the hunger hormone that basically signals to you that you're hungry. Not only that, it inflates your weight significantly. Like within a week, you can expect to gain upwards of five to 10 pounds of just intracellular water when you take MK677. So as a fighter, who has to suck down to 185 pounds to make weight, would you take something that artificially stimulates your hunger and bloats you up with 10 pounds of intramuscular water retention within a week? No, you wouldn't. This would be the absolute last compound any UFC fighter would use. Like this would actually hinder you rather than help you. So despite it, you know, increasing your GH and IGF-1 production up a little bit, the risk to reward on this compound is it's there's more cons than there are pros to using it. So I truly believe logically there would be no sense of using this. Like it, it wouldn't increase your performance very much at all. If anything, it'd bog you down with more water weight and make you gas out quicker. And it makes you ridiculously hungry. And again, the water weight would make it nearly impossible as well as overeating <laughs> would make it nearly impossible to make weight when you want to. Like this stuff literally will make you eat twice as much as you normally can and still not be satiated. It's that intense. So my guess is that the supplement was actually tainted because this is the last fucking thing I would ever use as a UFC fighter for performance enhancing purposes. So going back to the Weidman fight, this is where he looked the most insane in my opinion, even though he looks pretty much the same in every, 
every fight, but some of the shots in particular from the cameras were the most impressive during this Weidman fight, in my opinion. Like some of like just the downlighting, the way he looked, the way he was uh, flexing, I guess, during the shots taken, everything just looked the most juicy. So this is what I picked out of the bunch. So going up to this fight, this is what he looked like after going to the judges and the decision was made. Um, but going around that fight in the time frame, I wanted to dig back to April 8th, 2016. So this is him and John Jones. If you look at the time frame, Chris, Chris Weidman, the fight was uh, November 12th, 2016. So this is him with John Jones in April 8th. So obviously he's still uh, pretty beefy, but you can see the blurriness of the abs. He doesn't look like he does here. He looks like he has, you know, 10 pounds less muscle and he's less cut. The reality though is, that he's walking around at like 200 to 205 at least. Like if you actually look at some of the statistics for what Yomero, <laughs> what Yomero, what Yoel Romero walks around at, for the Paulo Costa fight, purportedly he gained over 10% of their body weight after weigh-ins. So when they actually took the statistics, Yoel went from 184.5 at weigh-in up to 207.2 after weigh-in. So that's like his walking around weight is much higher it's like over 205 this guy walks around like 210 215 plus but you have to consider just because that weight on a piece of paper is so high relative to his height like you would think okay a guy this fucking jacked who's that tall must be on gear but this is what his body fat actually looks like when he's walking around at that 210 215 220 level versus his you know hyper hydrated super compensated carb loaded look where he is walking around at 207 after a rebound from weighing in at 185. So his actual walking around weight is a bit of a fluffier, probably 215, 220. Again, though, that's still very, very impressive, and he still looks jacked, obviously. But you have to consider this standing weight is a temporary condition. It's not what he walks around like all the time. And the shots you see where he's you know flexing his face off with the deepest cuts, it's after water cutting to 184.5, 185 that he's been doing his whole life. So going from April 8th, 2016 to June 14th, 2016, here he is on a medicine ball, flexing his abs. And again, it's not like his arms are overly massive. The guy's not a bodybuilder, even though he probably could be if he wanted to, but you can see how deep the ab cuts are. This guy just has absurd genetic muscle inserts. Like his muscle inserts are fitness model level. This guy could probably step on a men's physique stage and do very well if he just really dedicated himself to it. And this is in his 40s. But you have to consider some guys can literally walk around at like 20% body fat and visible abs just because of how good their muscle inserts are. And the shape of them in particular, his muscle bellies are just shaped so well that they make him look massive like this. Even when his arm probably on paper maybe measures like 15 and a half, 16 inches. Maybe bigger, I don't know, but it's not like his arms are massive by any means. You look at some of these other shots, this is him in the park. Deep ab cuts, traps are popping, but it's not like the guy is a bodybuilder. This is in July 22nd, uh, 2016. This, this is him September 25th. This is one of the shots that is often used for promo promotional purposes here too. And this is after a workout, everything's popping. He's under the perfect downlining. He's sweaty, everything is flexed and everything is perfect for promotion. But you compare this to just a few months earlier when he looked like this. Some people would think, oh, this guy hopped on cycle. In reality, he's just down a bit of weight and you can see everything far more clearly and he's under heavy downlining and he just worked out. This is how much of a difference lighting can really make as well as just, you know, some water and fat. Like it's not like his size is any different. He hasn't gained a shit ton of muscle. This guy is simply leaner and is more optimal under more optimal lighting circumstances. And from September 25th, here he is in less optimal lighting, October 2nd. And you can see here, does he look as impressive as he did September? Literally <laughs> like a week before? No, he doesn't, but he still looks jacked. And you can see the deep ab cuts and this guy is uh, just a genetic phenom. And again, now we go to the fight itself and you can look at some of the, uh, if you look at some of the footage in the fight, you know, the guy is, in most shots, looking insane. In some shots, you can really pick out where the lighting is not doing him any favors, but it's, you know, a lot of it comes down to perception. When you're this lean, you can look huge, even when you're 185, 190, which for a lot of people, that's impossible to achieve, though, a suck down 185 and looking and being this big at super compensating up to like 205. So again, I can understand the skepticism. And frankly, it's hard to believe that somebody like this could 
in any capacity be natural when they look like this. But Romero, in my opinion, is the definition of just absurd genetics. Like here he is, May 20, May 26, 2017. This is not that long after the Weidman fight. His arm is not huge, but the rest of him is jacked. Again, he has a sick chest. He has a sick, he has sick traps. He has sick abs. His abs in particular are his best feature, in my opinion, as well as his traps. Here he is, August 22nd, 2017. Looking a bit, f well, he's still fucking lean here, but not as uh, optimal lighting as in some of the uh, post fight shots but um like is this is this completely absurd to achieve naturally i don't i don't think for somebody like him who has shown consistently for 20 plus years that his physique has not fluctuated peaking for shows after being tested by the olympics and usada consistently for this long of a period of time that he is just an expert at skirting <laughs> pharmacokinetic assessments and metabolite detections here he is june 7th 2019 he's a lot fluffier here he's probably taking time off and this is an example of his, his physique not looking like he's on gear this is in my opinion just untrained like this is him obviously taking time off and not you know really trying to look a certain way he's not even close to what his uh I would guess he's not even close to what his suck down 185 weight is here he's probably in the 210 to 220s and but again this is something where i bet if he was in the gym and just did a workout and then you put him under heavy down lighting and he flexed he'd probably look like he opted on a cycle within just you know 20 minutes of difference from standing outside to go to going in the gym doing some bicep curls and standing under down lighting here's another shot of him that uh is less flattering again though the genetic inserts are just absurd this guy is round as fuck he's got the best muscle bellies in the sport pretty much and he's uh just an elite, bar none. This guy has one of the most nuts physiques of all time um, in the UFC. And to be honest, I thought I was going to find some sort of, uh, you know, red flags from his past. But going as far back as, you know, 25 years almost, this guy has shown no significant difference. Like, which, wherever you see him where he looks cranked out of his mind, you can find a shot from around the exact same time frame with, with less optimal lighting, without flexing, without all of the proper circumstances to accentuate his physique that make him look a lot more natural. And that's honestly the same for a lot of fitness, uh, people in the fitness industry. You'll see them at an expo and they look way smaller in person than they do on Instagram or whatever. Now, obviously this is real life footage, so it's a bit different, but again, he's under perfect downlighting. He is just, he just fought, he's sweaty. He's literally just cut to single digit body fat percentage and cut weight to make 185. And then he's super compensated back up. So he's still looking super lean but just hyper hydrated and full this is like a peak scenario that you're not going to look like year round and i think a lot of people don't take that into account they just see the pop and traps the visible six pack the round chest and delts and they don't really take any of this into consideration and just historically based on his progression throughout the years or i should say lack thereof from <laughs> literally his early 20s this guy has looked exactly the same as far as i can tell going even as far back as his wrestling days you can see the exact same physique with the exact same amount of mass on his delts, his arms, his lat, his trap. Everything looks, you know, obviously you're going to find the less flattering shots like him in the uh, singlet here, uh, this blue thing. But you can also find shots of the exact same time frame where he looks exactly the same as he does now. So that's what I think. I think Yoel Romero is just a physical specimen and is a one in a billion human being, to be honest, with a 0.0001% genetics that no one is going to replicate with the inserts and the amount of lean tissue he can hold with relative ease. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think he is enhanced? Do you think he's natural? If he's enhanced, where do you think the red flags were? Don't just tell me. Look at his fucking traps and that's why he's on here. <laughs> Because this guy's been consistent for 25 plus years. Yeah, you could argue he's been on the exact same protocol for 25 years straight. But I think the likelihood is low. And I think that uh, the tainted supplement thing, especially the compound of choice, would just be nonsensical for anybody to use in the UFC. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It uh, helps the algorithm. So it's much appreciated when you guys do. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, at moreplates, underscore more deets, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. If you want to support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with, video description below, my team. TRT clinic. If you are seeking hormone optimization or testosterone replacement therapy, I recommend you check out the Evolve Company site in the video description. You can see all the treatments we offer, our medications list. We actually have a wish list now that you can actually add what you are looking for to a shopping cart of sorts that then gives our patient care coordinators some insight into exactly what you're doing to expedite the process and 
get on a call with you. It's free for a consult and they go through your blood work A to Z with you over telemedicine. It's all super convenient through telemedicine, uh, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever's preferable for you. And then after addressing your blood work, they'll connect you with one of our doctors who then can uh, get your protocol prescribed to you for whatever imbalances or deficiencies may warrant addressing and your medications will be shipped right to your door. You can save $50 off your first order with the coupon code MPMD50. If you want to support Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, my turnkey nootropic and pre-workout formulas, Gorilla Mind, these are the cognitive enhancing stacks that I use myself to knock out 14 to 16 hour productive work days. They are top of class for focus, productivity, creativity, essentially just staying locked in for more hours than you would otherwise be able to. That's what these products excel in. And they are the best in the industry for this, in my opinion. And they're all designed by me personally. And the pre-workout formulas, obviously self-explanatory what those are. I encourage you to just get your current pre out of the cupboard, wherever you keep it, <laughs> compare the label to mine. You'll see pretty transparently why uh, Gorilla Mode, the stimulant-based pre-workout, Gorilla Mode Nitric, the stimulant-free pre-workout, and recently released too, Gorilla Mode Stim, our energy formula without any of the pump, um, plasma expanders, um, hyperhydration volumizing agents, none of that stuff, just the cognitive enhancing components of Gorilla Mode, um, why they are top of class as well for the pre-workout industry. So check those out. If you are interested in anything else I'm associated with is in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.